Hey everyone, I'm back and this time we're going to be going over domain one of the NASM certification exam. If you haven't yet watched my first video, it's an intro with a general overview of the entire test. So watch that first and then watch this. But jumping right in, domain one. Oh, and before we start, I think it'd be pretty helpful if you follow along with me as I go through the guide, page by page, you know, so you can make your own notes. But, okay, here we go. Uh, be familiar with all the vocabulary and the terms, but be sure you know and memorize the definitions of the important ones, and I'll be highlighting what I think is important for the exam. On page one, they talk about the nervous system. One of the important vocabulary or terms that you should know or concepts is the mechanoreceptor and what it does. Page two, the Golgi tendon organ, the GTO is very important. Be sure you know that. And the next section they bring up is the muscular system. Know the relationship between the brain and the muscles and how signals are sent back and forth and how neurons play a role and how muscles are activated. Some of the important terms are tendons and the motor unit. Page three, they bring up the skeletal system. The test didn't really go so much into the skeletal system, but some of the important terms that you should commit to memory are ligaments, arthrokinematics, and the different types of joints in your body. Page four, the endocrine system, you know, not too much, at least for my exam. I don't think they asked much any or any questions on the endocrine system. Endocrine system involves testosterone, estrogen, but be sure you know what it is and what it does, right? The cardiorespiratory system. I think the main idea with this topic is know how blood flows through the body. We're talking about the left and right atrium, the left and right ventricles, and how the blood flows, use blood through the lungs and out back to your body. Let's see here, now we're on page five. Okay, now they talk about stroke volume, heart rate, and cardiac output. Look into the book and read the book for the details, but you need to know the difference what between those three are. Maximal oxygen consumption is an important topic or important idea that you should understand. Then they go on to the bioenergetics and exercise metabolism. And here, oh, there you go, right there. They talk about the different energy systems and what type of energy or where your body gets your energy from with different exercises and durations. So yeah, be sure you know that because it's very important and it's brought up a lot in the test. Um, EPOC, excess post-oxygen consumption there were a couple questions on that and know what that is. Moving on to page six, fundamentals of biomechanics. Talk about force, torque, and eh, not so much, but go over it. Become familiar with it as much as possible. The anatomic locations. All right, so terms like superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, be sure you know what all those are because it not only applies to this section but with the rest of the book, they talk about and they use those terms to refer to different parts of the body. And if you don't know what they are, then, then you're, you're gonna be lost. So you, be sure you understand what those terms are. We are on page seven now, planes of motion. Frontal, sagittal, and transverse. That's really important because you want to know if you're talking about the front part of the body, the back side, left side, right side. Uh, 
joint motions, flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. Those are very important terms that apply throughout the book uh, with different concepts and different sections. So yeah, those are really important. Be sure you know that. Uh, next page, page eight. Fundamental concepts. I think you should know everything here. And the fundament, fundamental, foundational concepts, sorry. Um, it's concept, concentric, eccentric and isometric muscle movements. It's very important. I mean, it applies to practically the entire book and how your muscles work and perform. Be sure you know that. So basically, pretty much on page eight, commit to memory and understand everything on page eight. Page nine is where they introduce the OPT model. OPT is the bread and butter of the NASM, the NASM programs. So obviously you know that. Right here. Moving on to page 10. We're talking about the principles of motor development. Didn't go too much into it, but some of the important terms that you should understand is muscle synergies, what that means, and how it applies to different concepts and studies, as well as proprioception. Those are, some, those are a couple of important terms that you should know. Page 11, macronutrients. Under the section of carbohydrates, there's glucose and glycogen. Yeah, those are really important. Know what they are. Know how it affects and applies to metabolism during exercise. Um, lipids, fats, know what a triglyceride is. And let's see what else here. Now you're on page 11. Moving on, page 12, they talk about protein. And then the key concept sections they have under micronutrients is toxicity. So under that subject, you need to know terms like the recommended dietary allowance or RDA. There were, I think, a couple questions on the exam um, asking and defining asking you what the upper limits are, what the recommended daily allowances are and averages. So when you get to that section of the book, be sure you understand that and know what those different categories are. Page 13 is about hydration. Know how much to drink before, during, and after exercise. And one interesting concept that I was asked on the exam is if exercise exe exceeds 60 minutes, drink a sports drink, right? With 8% carbs. Yeah, that was a, that was a test. That, I mean, that was a question. Uh, also on page 13, some of the key concepts. Calorie. What's the definition of a calorie? And then how much you should intake in terms of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. They have a table here, and a protein is four calories, a carb is four calories, and a fat is nine. And for a average diet, what percentage of it should be protein, carbs, and fat? You should commit to memory. Page 14, yeah, so on page 14, um, they talk about how much carbs you should eat before a meal, I mean before exercise, during exercise, and after. Be sure you know that. The test is going to go over it for sure, I think. Well, at least for in my exam it did, and it's brought up in a lot of other practice exams. And... Yeah, general recommendations, page 14. These are the terms I was talking about. RDA, the upper intake, adequate intake. 
right there. Know those definitions, know those terms, and know what they know what they are. And portion sizes, meal timing, and frequency. Okay, so I remember there were a couple questions they would ask. Okay, you have a client who's trying to lose weight or gain lean muscle, and they'll ask, okay, what would you recommend in terms of a nutrition plan or diet? Understand the concepts and the ideas because they're going to ask you, what would you recommend to this person? And they'll have different options. Be sure you understand that and know that. And lastly, page 15, common nutritional supplements. There's creatine, caffeine, and anabolic steroids. Know what each of them are. And yeah, caffeine, I was asked a couple times on the exam. So how much you should take before, after, whatever. And that's it for domain one, 15 pages. And if you have any questions, be sure to message me or, yeah, message me or hit me up. And I'll be coming out with a Domain 2 video here shortly. Thanks, guys.